Hey y'all, welcome to Yoga Mojo. It's Vinyasa 1 2. Thank you for joining me for our practice. Love that you've taken time for yourself. You've hopefully rolled out your mat. Come on into a comfortable seated pose as I take my harmonium off to the side. If there was ever a day to chant uh, for the great goddess Lakshmi, that was a mantra for Lakshmi, the great goddess Lakshmi, it is today. Um, there is a, an, an awareness of a, of a new light and a new dawn. And, and to quote to t quote Amanda Gorman, the great poet laureate, um, the new dawn blooms as we free it. And uh, yeah, for Lakshmi, I don't know if many people know that Kamala, the new vice president of the United States, Kamala is a Sanskrit word. It is a, a word that means lotus. And the awareness of the, the beautiful lotus the Padma, the great lotus, and then it rises up, and it's Kamala D. Harris, and D. Devi, and that is a, a wonderful word for goddess. So Kamala Devi Harris, the goddess. So the great goddess Lakshmi, Kamala is another name for the goddess Lakshmi, and Lakshmi is very much associated with the lotus and the light and the beauty and abundance and prosperity. So whatever your beliefs might be, just a little, a little knowledge about, about um, the, the name Kamala, the name Devi, and of course this awareness of Lakshmi all week. There's a wonderful story of Lakshmi which inspired this particular practice of, of the churning of the ocean of milk. And the churning of the ocean of milk symbolizes the mind, the conscious, the milk, the, the water. It is the conscious mind and the, the mind churns constantly. There's always something going on you know, with the mind. And in the story, uh, there is so many things that rise up out of the churning of the ocean of milk, but everyone had to come together. There is a uniting of the, the gods and the goddesses, the devas and the devis and the, the demons, and the ones that, you know, do those things that, that anger us or frustrate us. But they had to come together to churn the ocean of milk in order to get the nectar of immortality, the nectar of the gods, letting it rise back up like the beautiful lotus flower. And in the story, there were four drops of the nectar that were spilt by Garuda. Garuda is the mythical man bird in yoga mythology. Garudasana is a wonderful pose that I hope to bring into the practice today. And Garuda comes flying down from the heavens and he picks up the pot of nectar, the kumbha, the pot of nectar, kumbha. And as he does, he flies and again, four, four sacred little drops fall to the earth. And every 12 years, they say, and there is an awareness of this wonderful energy, and there's a celebration, a festival. They call it the Kumbha Mela, and it happens to be going on right now. <laughs> it happens to be going on right now. It's one of the, the largest religious um, ceremonies, activities, where people, millions and millions, come together to celebrate that there's always a new dawn, there's always a new light, and I love how all that kind of came together. So, let's go ahead, if you've taken your comfortable seat, Go ahead and shift a little bit. Take whatever props might support your practice and find your sukhasana, your sukha, your easy seat, that good space. Place the hands, relax the shoulders, and perhaps the closing of the eyes can help you to remove any distractions and to let yourself drop into the quiet space within. To allow yourself a moment for the mind and the breath to connect and to give yourself this great easy space of stillness and quiet. Tuning in to the rhythm of your breath, flowing in and flowing out. The breath is energy. 
prana. And the mind and the breath working together, supporting the physical body with an ease as we find this connection in through the nose and out through the nose. In this moment not only lets us find stillness and a quiet space within, but hopefully a sense of calming, releasing. With every release of your breath, allow yourself to release any tension, any tightness that you might observe in your physical body. With every exhale, there's this opportunity to let be and to let go. And every inhale fills us. And as you feel the next breath blowing in, allowing your crown of your head to get a sense of lifting up towards the sky, so the spine can start to awaken at the very top of your inhale. Let's open our eyes and focus our drishti. The drishti is the focal point of our gaze. We'll let the shoulders relax. We find that spot of connection, and we'll bring our hands to the mudra of Anjali. A lifting of the hands and the connecting, a uniting. So this week has been all about unity, obviously with this awareness of, of the goddess Lakshmi as I, I come back to this awareness of the deity of this wonderful energy known as Lakshmi. And what I loved about watching the inauguration was this, uh, the poet, Amanda Gorman, and not only were her words so powerful in the poem that she recited, but so was the energy from her heart that you could feel that energy behind her words, as well as the expression of her hands. And so those that practice with Yoga Mojo know that I, I love the mudras. So this first mudra, I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce a whole bunch, kind of bring a, a number of different mudras. I'm a big believer in the energy of the hands and the movement of the hands and the connection of the hands as they impact our own subtle energetic body. So even right here, namaskar, this offering gesture of Anjali. Let's take a bow, taking our gaze down towards the earth and even maybe to the fingers. And then get that sense as you take a breath in and start to lift your hands from the heart. We call it the awakening, right? The mojo awakening, we lengthen, we lift. We're gonna separate, turn those palms outward, let those arms float down. And with it, a release of tension, a release letting the energy flow down to the earth, and we turn those palms and we inhale, and as we draw the energy in, we lift the arms up. And we draw the energy so we can take the gaze to the sky, maybe the palms touch, let's turn those palms and exhale, releasing those arms down. Now this is our vinyasa, the one, two. So we're gonna prepare our bodies as we turn the palms here and repeat this energy, lifting up for the vinyasa flow and the poses that might come. Let's reach the sky and prepare to twist. Let's take a nice turn up the spine to the right. We're gonna take that easy turn to the right and release our hands on down to the earth. Now, Goddess Lakshmi is truly one of generosity. She is the bestower of boons, of, of wonderful energies. Let's go ahead and deepen if it's there, but be mindful, we're not ever forcing, we're just kind of seeing how it feels to take the spine into its twist. Let's take the gaze now towards the left. She is seen on a lotus with gold coins pouring from her hand release with two elephants pouring water over her. You can turn that left palm and sweep it up. And the color gold is very much associated with Lakshmi. That's been coming ourselves back in the center with the shoulders over the hips. Both palms are up now. We're going to spin our palms, rotating the arms in a way that awaken the shoulders. It awakens the upper back. We feel that inward rotation. We're going to turn those palms. Shoulder blades are going to slide down the back. Let's reach our gaze up as we lift the arms again and bring ourselves into that twisting action to the left. So as we spin to the left and we bring balance into our spine, it's wonderful to kind of check in. Notice the space from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. And as you're exhaling, if you'd like to hold or even go more deeply, if it's there comfortably to go there, anchoring the right sits bone, feeling the breaths as they flow in and they flow out. And we'll take a breath in, turn our gaze. And she is also seen with the hum of the humming bees, the mantras. Uh, let's go ahead and release the bees kind of swirling around the pot of nectar, releasing our chin towards the shoulder. And we'll spin this right palm and sweep it forward and across, bringing up that left arm as well. And as we open up the arms, we open up through the heart space. Let's spin those palms again. And as we rotate the, those shoulders, the hands, the forearms, let's sweep those hands behind our low back and lace our fingers. Now the lacing of the fingers is a huge inward rotation of our shoulder head. So it originates here at the acromium joint. When we have the lacing of the hands and we start to draw the hands down towards the earth, we start to 
feel the lengthening. And depending upon the structure of our arm, the bones, the muscle structure, some of us will roll that right bicep forward, try to roll the left bicep forward, forward and out, and feel expansion across the front body. Take a breath in, and if it is comfortable to hinge a little bit, take the hinge. Now being mindful in every practice of the low back, so as we have our natural curve there, we get to a point where we start to release the lumbar curve a little and bring our head down towards the earth, and then those hands might come up a little. There's a mindful drawing in towards the midline. And let's take our breath and rise up, awakening those hips, awakening the low back. Let's release the bind and circle our arms up towards the sky, reaching up towards the heavens. And then the hands flowing down back to the heart space, coming back into our mudra of Anjali. Let's go ahead for those that are sitting in a cross-legged pose or an asymmetrical pose to try to create a second Sukhasana that brings you um, into a second form and one that balances the right and the left. And as you're taking that action, yeah, let's go ahead and bring our hands back into Anjali. So I mentioned Lakshmi, Lakshmi, the wonderful, wonderful goddess Lakshmi. And the mudra is the Padma Lotus that often is symbolic with Lakshmi. So Padma, Kamala, um, wonderful Devi goddess and we separate the fingers keeping the thumbs and connected and the little fingers connected and it's a blossoming of this beautiful beautiful lotus now there is an awareness of what's called the lotus bud known as Padma Kosha Padma Kosha can be symbolized with the closing of the fingers keeping a little space here and I love to think about how in a, in a new dawn that the, the bud is it's like the lotus is right here and then it starts to awaken Right? So I'd love you to take your Padma Kosha and take it up towards the sky, this lotus bud. At the very top, we're going to open up the fingers, feel that connection, then spin the right palm out. Let that right arm float down, let your gaze follow, watching the hand as it sets to the earth. Let's bring our gaze up as we reach through the left fingers and awaken the side body. I'm going to walk the fingers over, place the palm so I have space to lean without crunching the right shoulder. Holding the space, but maybe letting ourselves open the shoulder, taking the arm back, the hand back, and here we go. We're going to go more deeply if it's there. Even that arm coming a little closer to the earth. Let's rise up, taking this left palm back, the left arm back, and letting that right hand join it. And above the head, we're going to take our Mutra of Anjali connection, find our beautiful Padma Kosha, and then open up the flowering lotus. Awesome, we're gonna turn that left palm. Let that left arm flow down so the fingertips can touch the space beside you. Opening up the right side from the outer hip to the fingers, and let's walk the fingers as we exhale, placing the palm and taking that great stretch. We might roll the heart to the sky a little bit, taking the arm back and the gaze up. And as you exhale, and maybe re-bend into that left elbow, trying to supinate that little finger down towards the earth. When we take our breath and we rise back up, inhale, that left arm will once more reach to the sky. Hands might connect, and we're going to come on down here into this space. Now, awesome yukta, awesome yukta mudras, because most mudras are done with both hands in some form, and often they, they kind of mirror each other, but there's generally a connection. So the circuitry and the subtle energy in the physical body. But there is an awareness of, of mudras that are called asamyuktas, which means it's, it's generally done with one hand. And the fully open blossom lotus is a spinning in of the little finger, the ring finger, the middle finger, and the little finger with the thumb kind of coming way to the side. It is called Alapadma Mudra, which is the fully blossom lotus with one hand. And you'll often see this in the, in the form of the dance. And again, when I, when I was listening to the inauguration and Amanda Gorman was saying that, I just noticed the energy in her hands, not only from her heart, but how she spoke. So let's go ahead and do it with that, with that left hand as well. So it's kind of spinning it. You can even do both, of course, and just notice a sense of energy that you might even feel all the way up into your shoulders. That, I truly adore, <laughs> I truly adore the mudras. Let's go ahead and release that. Now there are eight forms of Lakshmi. There can be many, many more, but what's called Ashta Lakshmi, and it's a great, great, great awareness of the, the many different forms of, of, of energy and, and, and feminine energy, Shakti energy that we have. And over the weekend, um, and we will get into the vinyasa, over the weekend I took a, a wonderful a wonderful lesson from one of my teacher's teachers, and it was a great uh, mantra to Lakshmi. And it is a prayer that they often say at the beginning of the day to call upon the great Shakti energy. And it is, it is a moving mudra, so it makes it even more special. We take our fingertips and we kind of rub them. And as we rub them, it's kara agra. Kara means hand, agra. 
beginning of the hand. And as we rub the fingers, Kara Agra Vasate Lakshmi, which says, Lakshmi, oh, bring me abundance. Let me play the Mega Millions and <laughs> bring me prosperity. So we kind of call upon that energy. Then we can pause that and then we tap the middle of our hands. And the middle of the hands is called Madhye. So Kara Madhye, but we call upon Saraswati, another form of the goddess, feminine goddess energy. And the Saraswati is wisdom and knowledge. Let me have wisdom. Let me be having great knowledge, wise choices and words, thoughts. And we tap the middle of our fingers. And then power and energy here at the root, Kara Mule, Mula, like Mula Banda, the root. And we tap the wrist and we call upon Gauri, Parvati, the goddess Parvati, to say, ha, huh, let me be strong. Let me be feeling that power. And I just think it's really kind of nice as we're talking about Lakshmi as we take this. And the last verse is, is one that says, uh, Mangalam Kara Darshanam, Darshanam, to see, to be able to see and to see with clarity, to see with truth. It's an auspicious day and it's a wonderful action. <laughs> Feel good. Let's go ahead and come into the pose of our tabletop. Lift up the knees if you're cross-legged. Find any of the props that might support your practice. When we come to tabletop, I like to cushion my knees, so you're going to see me grab a sukkah mat. Place it in the middle of the mat. Find your hands beneath your shoulders, finding the knees beneath the hips, and we form the table. And sometimes we come into table, we go, it's so easy. But there are so many things that we can do to energize it. We can feel the tips of the fingers. We can try to spin the fingers out to feel a little hug in towards the midline of the upper arm that integrates. We could even then try to spin the little toes down. And I like to remind us of this because it can change the space of our own table. And from this structure, let's move to the cow. Take the breath in, let the gaze come forward, lift the tailbone. And on your exhale, as you draw the navel in and up the table and release it to the knees, chin to chest, gaze is soft. Let's repeat it, inhale. So continuing to awaken, allowing the energy to flow from the tailbone to the crown of the head. We can draw the navel in and up and feel the arch into the back. Let's repeat it. So we have a contraction. We have this awareness of energy compression at the low spine. We have the space in the back body as we lift again. As you're following your own breath, allow yourself to flow back into a neutral spine as you take the next breath in. Let's awaken the right side and the right hip by lengthening through the right heel as we lift the right leg. A spin of the toes down. Let's take the length a little, a little farther back, draw the navel, low ribs in, and then mindfully turn your right toes to the right, and then turn them down. Let's lift the right leg a little higher. We're going to bring that knee up into the heart once. Awesome. We're going to extend this right leg back, turn the toes out, and bring that knee to the outside of the right arm. And again, it may not touch, it might. Do not worry, just allowing yourself to take that movement. We're gonna repeat that. Let's draw that energy, taking that knee up towards the outer right arm, maybe more towards the shoulder. Let's take this right leg nice and long, and as you do, the toes are still turned out. We're gonna place that inner right foot down. I like to slide the left hand a little more beneath the shoulder and spin. So I've moved my left hand in a little bit, spun the left foot now, rotating on that left knee. Roll to the outer edge of your right foot as you come up onto your fingertips. Take your heart forward, and then let this right arm go journeying to the sky. We can feel the shoulder heads come back, and then as we roll to the outer edge of that right foot, we can draw the navel in, maybe even feel like the right hip could come back. Now, as the shoulders are coming back, let's turn this right palm, take this arm over the head, get a nice stretch. We're reaching through the fingers. Awesome, we're gonna bring up this right arm, and as we do, Roll to the inner edge of your right foot, lifting this right leg. And again, don't worry how high it lifts, but maybe start to pulse it. So we're awakening again that contraction, release, the spanda, all through this IT. And then we'll pause here, and as we pause here, I'd like you to start to bend this right knee in, not only to the chest, but up towards the shoulder a little bit, and then bring your right elbow towards that right knee. We're gonna take this leg long, the right arm long. Let's repeat that too and go long, so the core is being truly awakened here, as well as the hips. Awesome, we're gonna take this right arm back to the sky, we're gonna roll into that space where we can feel the inner right foot touch down, roll back to the outer edge of the foot, try to lift the bottom hip up, up into the top hip, like the bottom waist up into the top waist, awesome, gaze down. Placing your right hand down to the earth, we'll spin onto the right ball of the foot, spinning that left foot back, and then resetting that left hand. Let's lift up the right leg, point the toes back, bend the right knee, maybe even lift the thigh up and down a little bit. 
and then we'll set this right knee back to the mat. And I'm gonna spin so I can continue to face towards you when I turn, so I'm gonna find ourselves taking that same sequence other side. Let's lift the left leg. Here we go, we've got that left leg, we've got a nice lift, a reach for the heel, the toes are down. Let's go ahead and spin the toes out and spin them down. And then lifting up this leg a little higher, we'll bring that left knee up into the heart one. We'll take this leg nice and long, spin the toes out, and twice here. We're gonna hug that knee up towards the left tricep, outer arm, and take it back. And here it is again, number two. Awesome. We'll take this leg nice and long, take a moment here, and then slowly place that inner left foot down. Placing that right hand now beneath the shoulder, spinning the right foot behind the right knee, coming up onto the left fingertips, and then shifting that energy. So the stacking of the shoulder, I like to take the right hand slightly ahead of the shoulder, rather than too far back, closer to the knee. And that's for the reflection, and then the, I should say that flexion of the wrist. So you've got a nice opportunity to stack. You might try to roll the left hip back, feel length. We're gonna spin that top palm and take that arm over the head. And then think of reaching through the fingers, that little supination of that little finger, and the roll of that left shoulder back. We're gonna lift up this left arm, take our time, take the gaze up, and then start to lift that left leg. And as we start to pulse it, again, we're working this IT a little bit, finding that connection. And I'd like you to pause that energy, and then slowly start to bring this left knee in, and a little bit up, and then that left elbow might touch it. We're gonna take it long. We're gonna repeat two, Take it long, and three. <laughs> Perfect, take that breath, and then slowly release that left inner foot, kind of feel that roll, and gaze to the mat. We're gonna spin onto the left ball of the foot as that left hand touches back down. Take the right hand back, got a moment to kind of press through the heel. We'll gaze forward, lift, point the toe, bend the knee, and maybe lift up the thigh a little bit. That's for the hip flexors too. <laughs> Go ahead, release our left knee down to the mat. Preparing for plank, let's spin the fingers out again, curl the toes under, let your gaze come forward, feel yourself draw the navel in, then in lifting up those knees, we have stability, we have strength. We're gonna shift forward a little bit, hug all of it in so that we can lower right on down into the space of a prone position. Uncurl the toes and try to reach the toes back. And as your breath flows in, cobra, bhujangasana, let's lift the front body. And exhale, floating ourselves back down. Cobra, and number two. Little toes are active, so are the feet are kind of pressing down. And we're going to exhale, release. Let's take it to our upward dog. Heart comes forward, arms go long, tops of the feet press. There's a sense of broadening across the front collarbones. So we lift up our hips. Think of spinning those fingers outward and find yourself shifting into down dog. Begin to walk out your dog, lifting the heels and lowering the heels. Now know that at any time in this practice that you can come into the space of down dog, you can come into the pose of the child. Let's flow this rhythm of movement into stillness, finding the quiet dog, the still dog, releasing the head, letting the gaze be soft. And perhaps a gentle connection with the hands to press down and forward a little. Try to hug the upper arms in towards each other. And let's lift up our heels, bend the knees intentionally, try to lift the sits bones a little higher. And then as your inner thighs spin back, lengthen your legs and try to release your heels back and down towards the earth. Our next breath flows, our gaze will come forward, we'll start to walk our feet to the top of the mat, bending the knees as we make that journey, coming into a form of a half fold into more of a full fold, whatever that might look like for you, begin to shift from side to side. Be kind to these hamstrings, be kind to the hips and the low back. A gentle bend of the knees can release some of the tight structure some of us feel. And then we'll pause and center and prepare for our half fold. Let's draw the navel in and up. That'll help to support the spine as we lengthen and lift the spine to be parallel to the earth. Root down into the balls of your feet as you hinge on your hips, releasing your head, your heart as you let the breath go back into our Uttanasana. A bend of the knees to rise up. We're taking it to our extended mountain. We'll feel the breath reach to the sky. Maybe the palms touch. As we're exhaling a breath, bring the hands on down to your heart. Take a moment here to close your eyes. 
giving yourself the mudra of Anjali and finding a moment to drop into that quiet space again within you. Letting yourself find this quiet space to set an intention for the practice. So set an intention as your sankalpa, at the root, the mula. At the root of your practice, what is your intention? And stay with breath. Kindness. We'll find a connection beneath our feet as we find the mountain and let the eyes open on an inhale. Releasing our hands of the mudra so we can let the arms go nice and long, open up through the front body as we root down into the feet. And again, I love the lotus. It's, it's the, the symbol of, of yoga mojo and the sense of rising up through everything and being brave, brave enough to see that light. Let's go ahead and begin the co-creation of our vinyasa with the Surya Namaskar A intro. We begin, inhale, arms circle, we gaze to the sky. Exhale, let's take Uttanasana, forward fold, releasing the head. Half fold, Ard Uttanasana. As we exhale, high plank, low plank, I'm gonna cue that transition to down dog. Know that you can always step to down dog. You know that the knees can come to the mat in your chaturanga. It might be cobra, it might be up dog. As we arrive in down dog, let's add on. Right leg lifts, inhale. We're gonna turn the toes out, open the hip and bend the right knee, taking it to chapasana. Try to gaze under the left bicep to the toes. Try to balance your shoulders as your right leg, right knee lifts. Extend your right leg nice and long, rolling your hips level. And as you exhale, the right knee is coming to the outside of our right arm. As our shoulders shift, we have a core plank with the knee to the outside. Let's sweep this right leg all the way back up, coming into the split action. So when we exhale, we'll gaze forward, come high on the back toes as we shift forward here, stepping and placing that right foot between the hands. There's a breath wave that flows, and I love to kind of hold the space, but find length in it. Press through the left heel, length and through the crown of the head. And as you exhale, anchor that left foot by turning the toes out at about 45, coming light on your fingertips. We have a heel to heel alignment, so when we rise up, we can rise up into warrior one. Let's hold the pose, but exhale a breath. Try to draw the right ribs back, left ribs forward as we take a mild twist in our warrior one. With the exhale, the leaning warrior, what we call the hands to heart arrow. We're gonna take the Padma Mudra if you choose, bringing the hands to the heart, chin to the chest, but try not to collapse in the front body. Get the right knee over the ankle, and as we inhale, those arms open wide, and here's where the gaze lifts. I love that action. We can spin those little fingers like that open lotus here. When we're exhaling, the full release into the water. Our arms might float to the low back as we bring our heart down into waterfall pose. Some will pause with the ribs connecting. Some might bring the shoulder onto the thigh. Some might snuggle that shoulder to the inside, releasing their head a little closer to the earth. Now, try to roll into the mound of your big right toe as you're anchoring into that back foot. If you choose, you might lift your shoulders up a little and then clasp the fingers to take the arms long. Breathe. A breath is gonna bring us back up into warrior one. So there's this huge shifting as we rise back up. And that's a lot of core work to lift the torso back up and take that space. As you're exhaling, we're gonna take our hands back to the mat, placing that energy so we can spin the back heel up, step the right foot back, shift forward, allowing ourselves to take chaturanga and inhaling, upward facing dog, and exhaling, downward facing dog, allowing the fold and the back bends to kind of neutralize the spine, let ourselves take a moment and take the same sequence on the other side. Let's lift the left leg. We come into that first split, I'm gonna invite the toes to turn out, try to lift the left hip up, opening the hip, bending the left knee. Let's hold the space, but turn our gaze to the left toes under our right bicep. That'll help to roll the shoulders. The left knee might lift as we extend that left leg. Let's go ahead and roll the shoulders and the, the hips into balance. So when we exhale next, we can bring this left knee to the outside of our left arm. Now with the breath, left leg is gonna go up, right heel is going to go down. We'll take our gaze forward, shift our energy forward, stepping this left foot now between the hands. Helping the heel, of course, to arrive. Here's the next breath for length. From the heel to the head. And blocks can totally be beneath the hands. Let's spin this right heel down. Feeling the turn of the toes, outer left hip hugging in and back. We can then rise as we root down. We'll rise up, bringing that energy into Virabhadrasana 1. 
Feel the breath wave. Feel the left hip, left ribs, and then the outer edge of that right foot. There's another breath. And when we're exhaling, we'll take that lean, the hinge. Now I like to hold every pose we come into the first time, at least a full breath wave. So let's now take a breath, because we'll repeat, of course, taking our time going through each of the poses. Now notice the little ribs, kind of hug them in, and then using that energy, waterfall. Hands to the low back, kind of love that. Kind of take it slowly, check in. Be really happy with wherever the pose takes you. Breathe. And then we'll rise up, rooting into the feet, sweeping the arms in a way that lets us come back into warrior one. Feel another breath. And then we'll exhale. Hands to the mat, right heel's gonna lift, left foot's going back, and through the vinyasa. Chaturanga Danda. And arriving, we breathe in and we breathe out. So I mentioned repeating pose to pose, breath to breath. Let's repeat that sequence. Right leg lifts, inhale. Hip opens, knee bends, chapasana, which is sugar cane. Our right leg goes back up to the sky. We'll roll the hips level and take this right knee to the outer arm. Exhale. There is strength there as we sweep this right leg all the way back up. Our gaze comes forward. We're going to step this right foot between the hands and anchor the left heel simultaneously with that exhale. So when we rise up with the inhale, we stretch this front body. From warrior one to the leaning warrior, let's exhale and feel the beauty of the goddess. From the dark, the light, inhale. Let yourself take the gaze forward and up a little. And then counter it all, floating into your waterfall, using the release of the breath. Our breath flowing in again then brings us back up into our warrior one. And let's release the breath, spin, turn, open, giving ourselves the next sequence, warrior two. It'll be heel to mid arch, left foot might turn a little bit, of course, when it's more parallel or 10 degrees in. We'll check for this form. And one of the reasons I like to pause is when we repeat it, our body's gonna have a little muscle memory, so we can refine it here. We can make adjustments here. Take a breath. Let it be. Let's take the dance of the warrior. Spin the right palm and inhale, reverse it. Let a breath go as you hold. Feel the next breath, maybe expand and reach for the right side. And exhale, side angle. Options, forearm to the thigh, left arm to the sky. Option, hand to a block. Option, fingertips onto the earth, maybe the arm over the head. From our beautiful side angle, reverse triangle, up we rise, taking the sweep of energy. I'm gonna ask us to hold the pose, but feel the breath. Fingers going up, maybe that left hand sweeping behind you a little. And when we're exhaling, returning back into warrior two. And as the gaze comes over those right fingers, it prepares us to spin those palms and to take it into a wide angle Tadasana variation. So Prasarita Tadasana that prepares us for our goddess. We got the toes out, we got the knees in that same direction. So when we exhale and take the goddess pose, here we are. Finding this movement, coming into the goddess, the pose of the year here at Yoga Mojo. So as we have this awareness of our Lakshmi, Kamala, got the inner knees flowing out, outer knees hugging back. Even try to hug the, hug the outer hips in and just notice any sensations. And I love to remind us to kind of roll to those outer feet again because we tend to collapse in. The adductors are often some of the weakest of the leg muscles, so they'll, they'll try to come in. Nice. Take a breath. Let it be. We're going to open up those arms as we inhale. As we exhale, a little dip towards the midline. Now, it might be the hands come to the thigh and that inner thigh, and you take a little bit of a dip. Some will be able to come into this space and come into it in a way that allows them, again, to keep the knees in a safe space. I mean, come all the way back up. Inhale. Yeah, we're going to do it the other way, of course. Exhale. Again, I'm kind of dipping into it, hinging on the hips. And the hinge will be very much uh, an awareness of our muscle structure and the bones. Let's come back into center. We can inhale, come into that center, and exhale. And this is not in the flow repeating, but maybe we call upon Lakshmi here. Yeah, maybe we take a moment for serocity, wisdom, and knowledge. And maybe we say, ah, oh, at the root, power, energy, the great goddess Shakti's.
<laughs> I took him into this space. Let's rise up, taking this energy up to the sky and then even lifting up the heels to engage that energy, flowing up now from the balls of the feet through the legs up into the sky. This little lift prepares us for skanda. Skanda is also known as span pose. The left tail is going to float down and we're going to kind of float over here to the left side towards the back end of your mat. Now notice that we haven't stuck the booty way back, that we still have a little bit of a lift. If it is there for the rotation of the hips and the flexion of your hips to dip down to the inside and to lift this right foot, that might be a place to experiment. You might be placing a block underneath your tailbone, rolling to the outer edge here of the left foot. So Skanda is like one of my favorites for this huge hip opening. And then there's a Pratamba bust. We're going to feel a nice stretch on that inner right thigh. We're going to take it to the other side. So here comes that ripple water action where we kind of stay low. And you might place your forearm on the side, kind of support the chest, kind of roll back a little bit into it. You might say, hmm, I'm going to be able to come down on this side as well. Bring up the toes, so flex. But I love to open the arms when we come towards the front. Shoulders are rolling down the back, the heart is open. Again, try not to roll too much into that inner foot, finding that space. And then we take one of these mojo turns that brings us into our reach back arrow. So this right hand's gonna sweep back behind us. We're gonna spin our torso to the end of the mat, turn the right toes, lift the left heel, lift and open the heart a little bit. And we're in a beautiful form of the reach back arrow. From the space, a little balance. Taking our, our energy to the top, we step into this right foot. Now as you step into the right foot, make any adjustments. Hands can be on the earth, hands can be at the heart, arms can go forward. Feel a breath. Warrior three is gonna have some movement. We're gonna exhale, intentionally and mindfully bend the right knee, lift your fingers, kind of brush, like you're making the ripples in the water. And then we'll stretch the right leg, Open up our arms nice and wide, reach for the left heel, turning the toes down. Bend the right knee, place our fingers, placing the foot, and folding. Now when we rise up, gently bend, circle your arms, reach to the sky. And let's bring our hands on down to our hearts and take a moment to pause. And in this pause, we can sense the movement of energy on the right side versus the left side. So let's bring the left side into balance. I'm going to change so I can continue to face you. Here we go. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, Uttanasana. Ardha Uttanasana. And Chaturanga Dandasana. Urva Mukha, upward facing dog. Ardha Mukha Shavanasana, downward facing dog. Our left leg lifts, inhale. We open the hip and bend the knee, such an awesome opening. Taking that left leg nice and long. So we can exhale and bring that knee to the outer arm. A breath blows in. We gaze and we step the left foot between the hands and spin the right heel down. When we rise up into Virabhadrasana one, it's with a mindful reach. The exhale of bringing all of the energy into the heart. Maybe that little lotus bud. And then phew, the lotus blossoms as we open. And then back to the water. We float. We'll rise up as we feel the breath, taking the energy into the space. So warrior one can then shift to warrior two. And the foundation of one and two, as we know, is very different. It is often heel to heel guideline in one, heel to mid arch in guideline number two. So we shuffle the left foot in and we maybe even broaden the stride. Take a breath. Let it be. We're going to turn that left palm. Here we go. Up and over. Reverse it. Viparita, Virabhadra. The reversing of the energy. And then exhaling. Placing that left forearm. Coming into a form of side angle. And I love to bring in the dance of the warriors to really find the awareness of the stretch through these intercostals and outer hip. Try to hug the outer left hip under. And then let's windmill the arms. And there's a nice press of that left foot in a way that helps to facilitate the movement back up and over. Try to hug your heels in here. And then as you're exhaling, warrior two, we have that steadiness. We breathe. We're going to move to Tadasana. Let's take our energy, turning those heels in as the toes come out. We're not going to hold the goddess. We're going to let ourselves float down into this goddess. And then inhale, open up the arms. 
We'll take the little dip. Maybe it's the left side that comes first. Boom. Inhale, come back in the center. And exhale the other way. And we come back into center. And we're going to exhale, bring it on back. So we can rise up, rise up, lift up, bringing up the heels of our feet. So here we go. We're going to shift that energy to the back. Take a moment to pause. See how it feels as the breath flows. And yeah, we're going to go the other way. Maybe opening the arms. Breathe. Again, never forcing. Here we go. We're going to spin, taking that mojo turn to the end of the mat. Back heel lifts, which will help us balance our hips. Stabilizing. Find your drishti ahead of you. Step into that left foot, using the core to not only help to lift, but then to stabilize. And then hands to the earth, to the blocks, or arms forward. Take a breath. And then as we exhale, I love this little kind of release. And then you can brush your fingers. You can feel that energy of earth connection. And then to rise up from it, finding the light as we rise up into warrior three. Let's exhale, bend that left knee, place the fingers, placing the foot and folding. When we take a gentle breath and rise up, inhale, we'll circle our arms to the sky. And with the exhale, hands to heart. Let's close our eyes for a moment, check in. Check in, take a moment in mountain to mountain tadasana. Scan the physical body. Notice the breath. Hopefully the breath is, is fluid and easy. You might feel a little of the tapas, a little bit of the fire. And to take that with us as we repeat our sequence. Let's take our breath and let the eyes open. Release our hands with the mudra of Anjali. And we begin. Inhale, pose to pose, breath to breath. Exhale. The goddess Lakshmi. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. And high plank, low plank, I'm gonna cue. You're gonna follow the rhythm of your breath. You'll find the movements and the poses in a way that is truly letting you feel good. Let's lift the right leg, inhale. Then take a bend, exhale. Let's cue, breathe in, let the right leg go long. Breathe out, let the right knee come to the outside. Breath flows in, right leg goes up. And the breath flows out, right foot sets, left heel anchors. We breathe in into warrior one, reaching to the sky. And the hands to heart arrow, the leaning warrior of our lotus. We open the arms, maybe lift the gaze. And journey down to the earth, down into the water. When we rise up on the breath, it is back into warrior one. And with the exhale, the shuffle, warrior two. Returning that energy, bringing that reverse warrior. And exhaling, side angle. Again, any variation. And inhaling, sweeping energy to Viparita Trikonasana. And exhaling, back into two. This turn of our hands, a shift into the wide angle mountain. An energy as we release ourselves into the goddess pose, Utkara Kona, opening the arms as we inhale. A little dip towards center as we exhale. Let's come back into center as we breathe. And take it the other way. And come back into center, opening the arms and then allowing ourselves to be challenged to come deeper. When we rise up, there's a moment of length, a moment of lift. With the exhale, that beautiful fan pose towards the back. And then we'll shift the energy to the front. And spin into that mojo turn as we let a breath go. There's a breath here to warrior three, feeling that energy. And a moment to, to dip. Hands might gracefully touch the earth or space. And then open up the arm as you lengthen your right leg. And with the exhale, hands to the earth, foot next to foot, we are folding. We'll rise up now on that breath, inhale, extended mountain. And with the exhale, hands to our hearts. Let's take it to the other side. Arms reach, inhale. Exhale, Uttanasana. Ardha Uttanasana. Chaturanga 
Chandradandasana. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Aru Mukha Svanasana. Ekapada, left leg, breathe. Chapasana. Ekapada means one leg. Exhale, let the core plank to the outside. Breathe in, back into the Hanuman split. And exhale, setting that left foot, releasing the right heel. And rising up, inhaling, energy of the goddess and the warrior. And exhale, perhaps the lotus bud. And inhale, letting it open. With the exhale, we'll float into the waterfall. We'll rise up, inhale, warrior one. And with the release of the breath, we'll spin the open warrior two. As we turn the palm and inhale, the feet are grounded. And the movement is in the torso, the hips, the strain, the wind, of the movement of the arms, the air element. Let's open, following that energy. Nice, and exhale, deep into two, because we turn, inhale, wide angle, prasarita tarasana, exhale, utkora karakona, inhale, opening, a little goddess to dip, exhale, boom, inhale, exhale, two, inhale, and exhale, come deeper. Let's rise up, inhale, bringing that lift, a little lift, and skanda to that back foot. And then we can float it, opening it as we shift to the other side. On the exhale, we spin. Both feet shuffle and shift. And here's the breath, inhale, warrior three. As we exhale, bend the knee, float the fingers, and then feel the energy from the back heel to the head, from the foot to the hip, and we're gonna exhale. Hands to the mat, foot next to foot. Bending that standing leg, of course, so that when we bend the knees here and we rise up, we have stability, we have reach, and we exhale, hands to our hearts. Let's take another Surya Namaskar. Inhale, arms reach. A salutation to the sun. Exhale. The breath flowing in in the golden light of the sun. We'll exhale, Chaturanga, step with jump in. Urdhva Mukha. And Aramukha Svanasana. Feel the breath. And I love the Sanskrit words, simply for the vibrations. And that is how they feel and how they sound. Take another breath. Let's shift ourselves forward a little to bring those knees comfortably to the mat. Slide your toes in. Hands are going to slide back, child's pose. Releasing your forehead, releasing the weight of the shoulders, and giving yourself a form of the child that lets you be, that lets you be. What I love about the churning of the ocean of milk story, if you have never heard it, it is, it is um, a story that resonates today, and it is about unity and coming together, facing our fears and churning the, from the darkness up into the light, let your breath flow. And the new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light. Only if we are brave enough to see it, and only if we are brave enough to be it, that light is within you. From this moment of rest, our child's pose. We're going to place our hands. I like to come to child's pose because your spine is in a nice, um, I'll say fairly neutral, is in that it is supported. It's going to have a little bit of rounding, of course, but it is, it is fairly neutral. We're not intentionally flexing. We're not taking a back bend. So let's take our breath and lift up our gaze and just observe what happens to the spine. So we have some elongation. We can then draw the navel in, bring the hands beneath the shoulders as we bring the torso up, spin the toes so that they curl under, and then lift our hips, rocking the hips to the sky, releasing our heels down towards the earth. Our next breath, our gaze is gonna come forward, we're gonna bend those knees, 
step jump float hop walk our feet to the top of the mat and once we arrive here fold again you might choose to bind hands behind the legs you might take hand to opposite elbow you might take those fingers to lace them draw the shoulders up away from the earth and let your arms go long feel the breath Try not to put too much weight here in the heels, but even bring your weight slightly into the balls of the feet. Wherever you have chosen to take your bind, we're going to release the bind. Bend our knees, let the gaze come forward. That helps to open up the front body. And by opening the front body as we rise, we have length through the back body as well. Rise up into your extended mountain and release. Samastitihi. Letting our arms float down and we arrive. Awesome. So, I hope you're feeling good from the vinyasa flow. I'm going to bring us into a bit of a balance challenge. I mentioned Garuda. Now, Garuda is the mythical man bird that kind of swoops down and, and carries the nectar of the gods. So, let's work our way into him. Let's place him where he's supposed to <laughs> place our left foot. Find the corners of the foot. I like to step into it, having a nice little bend in that left, and then bringing up the right knee, flexing the right foot, hands to the heart. Awesome. Take this right knee to the side. Kind of like we were going into the pose of last year, the tree. We're going to bring it in. Now when we cross the midline of this right leg and kind of go, hmm, let's slide that foot down a little bit, bending that standing leg. Right foot might stay off to the side. You might wrap that foot around your calf. It might slide a little bit more down towards the ankle. And here we go. Try to draw the right hip back. Give it a snuck way forward. Let's open up the arms. Now Garudasana's arms in this pose stretches the upper back. So we're going to take that left arm over the right and take our, our wrap. So if you've never had Garuda's pose, we're taking the arms in a similar way as we're taking the feet. But it is the opposite arm on top than the leg that is on top. And try to lift your elbows a little bit, like he was lifting up and four little droplets fell. We're going to open up those arms. Beautiful. Release your arms so that when you inhale, you can stretch in that leg that was slightly bent, that standing leg. Bring up your right knee. Left hand is coming to the waist. Right hand might come here to support the leg. If it is there for you to reach your peace fingers, hastas, your hand and your big toe, pas de goust, we extend it. We try to take the right big toe farther away. And then open up the left arm, open up this hip. Awesome, take a breath. And maybe try to lift this right leg a little higher. We'll slowly release it down and bring it all the way back. Feeling that energy, letting that foot go. Bending that knee and setting the foot down. So yeah, difference between my all levels and my one, two, some of it was right there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take the right foot. Stepping into it. Again, I like to find the touch points and then bringing that knee up because the body is gonna constantly move. In balance, it is constantly having these small little shifts. Yeah, you might bring your hands to your waist, hands here. You might open, you might be supporting it. Take your time, bring it all back in. Now bend that standing leg a little. And that is key on the balance, is being able to control some of the structures in a way. So I'm wrapping this left foot around. Again, it might be hanging to the side. I'm going to try to slide it down. Open my arms for a moment. Now the left leg is on top, so it is the right arm on top. And we wrap, taking the right elbow over the other, maybe palm to palm or hands to back of the hands. Breathe. We have our drishti. We have even breath. And we have Gaudra Dasa, we might lift the elbows. We might lower the elbows. We're gonna open up those arms. Breathe, awesome. Let's stretch through that right leg, lift off the left knee. Option, hands behind the thigh, to the shin, hand to big toe. Here we go, we stretch. And again, that leg might stay bent. We might open this arm here. And the arm coming to the side is wonderful if you choose to take this leg to the side because it gives us the balance. We might lift it a little. And we'll come on back. Here's that space. Now when I ask you to let go, your quad is gonna fire up. It's gonna fire up, yeah. <laughs> Place that foot down, feel really good. Feel really good. <laughs> okay. So from Gardner Dawson, this mythical eagle bird, he is so wonderful. There's so many wonderful stories about um, Gardner Dawson and the pose that symbolizes that energy. We're gonna take it down into the mala. Let's go ahead and start to take the release. Got my hands on my thighs. So if we've got tight, 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 um, a calves, you might come right about here and go feeling it. It might be that you have the space to come down. It might be the quads are really strong. So again, allow yourself a moment to come into your space. Try not to collapse in, try to keep laying through the spine. 
And I love this form because I can use my, I can use my arms to try to help those legs not collapse, but again, you're not forcing. Take a breath. And the churning of the ocean of milk begins with the wise sage known as Dervasis. And he was so happy that the celestial nymphs brought a garland to him, a mala. It was made of lotus flowers, and they were ever fragrant, never fading lotus flowers. So imagine the space of the garland. You've created a circuitry. And from our garland, we're going to have a seat. We're going to come down and have a seat. Yeah, feel good. Let's lengthen those legs from the bending we have. I'm going to spin and take the pose of Danda, allowing the heart to lift up. Tailbone is rooted down. Arms are going to circle. Navel is coming in. And from our Danda, reach into Paschimottanasana. Pause as you take the journey. Now again, check in that you're hinging here on the hips, not collapsing in the back. So we've got this nice hinge on the hips. An option to place the hands beneath the calves. Try to pull the hands back, press the legs gently down. With the chest leading, ribs might come to the thighs, chest might come to the thighs, head might come down. But think head towards the toes. And letting your gaze be soft as you breathe. Feeling the energy. From Paschimottanasana, the breath of the West. So there's this energy all the way up. We're going to rise up, inhale, circle our arms, reach to the sky. And the exhale, it releases our arms. And then inviting us to come into a pigeon seat. We're going to bend the knees a little bit. Let's take the right leg and cross it over the left thigh. So my hands are going to come back. I invite you to kind of lift up. Slide this right knee to your chest. Cross your right foot over that ankle. And then try to roll to the front of your sits bones. Now you can take blocks under your hands to lift the floor. And that might be all you need to feel your outer hip. And being mindful of the knee, for some friends who are not really feeling anything until they slide that left foot in and or lift and bring themselves a little closer. So again, check in to see where it feels and how it feels. Nice. And as you're in your space, I'd love for you to kind of lift up. Mindfully take the left hand back. Use this left arm like a second spine. Notice how we can kind of lift ourselves up We'll reach up through that right hand with all this length, draw the left shoulder back as you're turning, and place your right you know, sole of the foot, the right forearm, right upper arm, maybe hands to the earth. Getting into a nice form of a, an, a twist. So the sits bones are still very balanced. We're gonna come back. Awesome. This right leg, I'm gonna ask us to lift it up. And try to keep that thigh close to the chest, then try to extend your right leg. Think lift. Awesome, we're gonna bend this right knee. Place it right down, take that same sequence other side. We'll flex the left foot, bring it up, try to cross it over and again, you can move this right leg. And then pause, you might go, that's it. Feeling it on my outer hip and pause. You might say, I'm gonna try to snuggle the right foot in and bring my chest up. You might say, I'm gonna lift and just kind of notice how this feels. Contraindications, anything in the knee, anything happening in the low back, truly a time to kind of back off a little bit or even come out of it. And wherever you might be in this space, we're gonna say, okay, let's place the right hand behind us, lift up through the left, spin a little bit with all that length, placing the sole of the foot and the outer left arm or even the left fingers down to the mat. So think length, think lift, engage the core to support the movement of the spine. And yet we're gonna come out of it we come out of it, we can bring this left foot forward, find the space, and try to extend that left leg. Think lift. Perfect. We're going to bend that left knee, place the foot down. Let's take a Baddha Konasana. You're going to see me bring the soles of the feet in, knees are going out. We're going to roll to the front of our sits bones again. And then, again, just check in. doesn't have to be a huge movement, but letting yourself kind of lift up. Think up dog and hinge once more from these hips and pause. As soon as you're feeling any sense of stretch, that's a good space to pause. Some will not feel anything until they come a little deeper. Some will bring their toes to their forehead. Right there at the Ajna Chakra. When we rise up, we're gonna bring our energy up, slide the hands to the outer knees, draw those knees in, huge stretch, come to the toes, and then lift your shins. We'll hug everything in, and if you choose to go into a form of a vasana where the legs go long and the arms go, come long here by the energy with length, we're gonna float into our half boat. 
As you're holding your half boat, bring your left knee into your chest and go long. Bring your right knee into your chest and go long. Bring your left knee, right elbow and go long. Right knee, left elbow and go long. Feel a breath. Let it be. Take another breath, kind of hug everything in. Flex your feet and point. Flex your feet and point. Flex your feet and point. We're going to take our bud. We're going to take our blossoming. We're going to take one hand. We're going to feel that breath and float all the way down. Bring your back to the mat. Bring your, your back of your heart, your shoulders, the back of your head, let it touch down, letting your knees float into your chest. So we release the low spine here, drawing the navel in. We're going to set the right foot. We're going to set the left foot. Now try to keep the low back on the mat as your arms come alongside the body. Roll your shoulder blades under. And then as you're here, bring both knees into your heart and extend the legs up to the sky. Now I've got my toes pointed to the sky. Let's all start to flex the feet. And as we flex the feet, try to squeeze the legs towards each other. And then point the toes again and make a little bitty circle. Little bitty, bitty, bitty controlled. So a lot of the movement was the big muscles taking big actions. I want these same muscles to make very tiny little movements. So I'm gonna reverse it now. Right, I'm going to reverse that energy, taking the little circle the other way. Now notice if your core is engaged and the low back is on the mat. And if this flexion of 90 degrees is challenging and your legs are here, know that you have a, a lot of, of strength happening in those legs. Let's go ahead and flex the feet, bend the knees, hug it in. We're going to place our feet now down to the mat. Draw the right knee into the chest for a moment and extend the right leg. Giving ourselves time, if you would like to have a strap, you totally can. I'm gonna just take another breath or two here, stretching out this right, and then gently bending it to stretch out the left. Letting that left leg come along the earth, and then re-extending the right leg. And then slowly bending this right knee, and hugging that left knee in to join it. Back into the pose of a pawn, right foot touches down, left knee comes to the heart, left leg is gonna go long. Again, if you'd like to grab a strap, finding the lengthening of your arms so the shoulders can stay relaxed. I'm going to ask us to bend the left knee to release some of the tension so this right leg can go long to the earth, left leg can go back up to the sky. Yeah, feel a breath. And then we're going to take a moment and kind of bend this left knee. We're going to slide the right knee in to join it. And then placing your left foot down to the mat. Take this right foot up and over your left thigh. Let that right knee kind of drift away from the shoulder so you have your, your, your pigeon on a supine space. Without using your hands or your arms, and let that left knee come a little closer to your heart. So the same thing we did seated, we are now on our back. Let your arms go into a beautiful T-shape. As you do, set the left foot down. Slide that right knee more to the top of the right thigh, top of the left knee and then start to float your knees over to the right. Now if you'd like a little more intensity, try to slide your knees more to the right elbow. And as you slide the knees to the right elbow, that left shoulder is anchored and you might feel an awesome stretch into some of the hip action that tends to be really tight. And some of us feel a little movement in our spine. <laughs> We're gonna bring our knees back up. Pause, place the left foot. And then slide the right knee up. And again, just letting your legs do the work. Shoulders, torso, all at ease. Left foot, left knee, left foot. Open up that space. Ah, and again, maybe you lift it a little. And then we can place the right foot down. Sliding that left knee over toward the right, more on top of the thigh or the knee. And then taking that beautiful twist to the left, your gaze to the right. And again, if you would like, see what happens if you try to slide your knees up towards the left elbow a little bit, intensifying. And again, the right shoulder might start to get light. See if you can anchor it down just to keep a nice spaciousness of opening. And then we'll bring ourselves back into center. We'll place the right foot down, lift up the left knee, place the left foot down. Let's slide the arms now by the sides roll the shoulder blades under, and take a three breath bridge. We're going to take our, our energies, we root into the feet, feet are hip width distance, toes are pointing forward, we'll slide the shoulder blades under, maybe bind, take a breath. 
and let it go. Hug the inner thighs, breath number two, and let it go. Breath number three. And we're gonna let the breath go, release our spine, and start to bring the spine back down to the mat. And once we are there, clear out the space around your, around your um, mat and above your head and around your head. We're gonna bring our knees into the mat or into our chest again. <laughs> Yeah. And then we're going to open up those arms into a beautiful T. So as we take this, we'll find a supine twist. Exhale the knees over to the right. Let your gaze shift to the left and take a moment to be. And I love this because we're going to lift up this left arm. So the power of the breath, the power of the hands, let's lift this left arm up to the sky. Notice the compression on the right shoulder as your left hand continues the journey like the sun in the sky, rising and setting. We'll slide our left hand a little farther away once the palms touch and trickle this left hand above our head. Once we arrive above the head, with a nice long arm, spin your palm up and then start to roll your left shoulder down, letting that left hand kind of slide and glide along the floor, bringing that left arm back into its beautiful T-shape. And then those knees come back up into center. We'll take a moment to pause. With an exhale, our knees are going to float over to the left and the gaze is going to shift to the right. We'll take a moment to be here. Now, contraindications, of course, is any shoulder action going on, so be kind. If you choose to lift up this right arm to the sky, we pause. We feel the weight shift to the left, and then we place this right hand on top of the left. I like to slide the right hand just a little further away so I can feel the movement of the fingers trickling over and above my head. And then once it's there, kind of turning the palm up and then slowly, slowly, slowly letting this right hand float in a way that brings this arm back, letting the gaze follow till we're back into that beautiful T-shape. Once we're there, our knees are gonna scooch back up into our chest. Let's bring our arms to the sky. Feel the shoulders relax. Let the hands come around the shins, draw it in, and lift your head, your heart, up off of the mat so that you can float down, shoulders and neck, head, arms and feet. The legs will go beautifully long in a way, in a space that allows you to let be. Close your eyes, relax the energy, the breath's full, slowing down, softening of the muscles around the eyes, the jaw, Releasing the tongue from the roof of the mouth. Relaxing your shoulders. And always, always using any props that might support Shavasana as well. And feel your breath as it flows in and your breath as it flows out. As you're resting, Amanda Gorman's reading of her poem resonated. And there is another author. It's, her name is Susan. It is a poem that's called Light the Way for Love. Lakshmi is all about beauty and abundance and generosity, but it's the deep soul beauty. It's not the external beauty so much. But she's also a path, the alchemical path of yoga. And there's this radiance and this grace that comes with this energy of Lakshmi. And this poem, this beautiful poem is by Susan. And the light, the way for love. They say the beauty comes from a spirit that has weathered many hardships in life and somehow continues with resilience. Grace can be found in a soul who ages softly, even amidst the tempest. I think the loveliest by far is the one whose gentle heart bears a hundred scars from caring, yet still finds a way to pick up the lamp one more time to light the way for love. Energy flows in, energy flows out.
staying with the breath, allowing yourself to feel every inhale and every exhale. Wealth and wisdom and power. Kar Agre Vasate Lakshmi. Kar Madhye Saraswati. Kar Mule Nestiti Gauri. Mangalam Kara Darshanam. May we all see clearly. Letting our breaths flow in and flow out in the restful space of Shavasana. Tap into that light that is there always within you. As the next breath flows, let it fill you. And then letting the breath release, letting yourself go deeper for just a moment, releasing all negative energies, negative thoughts, finding the clarity of the mind. And when the next breath flows, once more, let it fill you, let the chest rise. And when you let the breath go, feel the belly soften, and send the energy to the fingers and the energy of our hands begin to move those fingers, awakening the toes with the breath. And another breath will flow, and as it does, arms will rise up towards the sky. And then effortlessly, let the breath go, let the arms float back down, maybe behind you. So when the next breath flows, you can take a stretch. You can take a reach from the toes to the fingers, and then let yourself release a breath, beginning to step your feet in, bending in the knees, Arms might lift to capture your legs and let yourself take a bind to move from side to side, from the right to the left of the spine. Allowing the little touch points of the shoulder blades, back of your ribs and the hip points is kind of raw. So when you're letting your breath go and you roll to the right side, you might pause. You move to the right side as the way the earth moves, a load off of our own hearts. And then we can pause and let ourselves feel a moment your own intentions resurfacing. We'll place our hand to the earth and give ourselves a gentle press so we can come back into our own Sukhasana. And as you're journeying back into a beautiful, comfortable seat, let the spine be long, and then the hands, let's rejoin them here in the mudra of Anjali and share a breath together. Let's draw the energy in. And let the breath go. And the sound of Om, if you choose, on the exhale, we breathe in. Om. And to close our practice with Sarasati, our hands of the forehead, good thoughts, everyone, clear and mindful thoughts. Hands towards the lips, the words we speak, let them be beautiful. Let them be kind, let them be compassionate and caring. And as the hands return to the heart, always, always, may we follow our own path with the very best of our own intentions. Thank you so much for our practice. Namaste.